Before we start the video, I have a confession. I love Mario Kart. It's probably my favorite series of all time, bar none. But I've never actually played Double Dash. I bet some of you who have read the title already are scoffing right now. Who does this man think he is having the audacity to even speak this holy game's name, much less try and tell us how to play? Folks, I hear ya, but don't worry. It's actually better this way. I haven't played this game, which means I haven't gotten used to one specific cart combination that I chose as a child and never deviated from for the past 20 years. If I were attempting this with a game that I had played, I would be tainted with bias. I would subconsciously sway the data to try and convince you that the best cart combo was Toad in the Jet Bubble, or, or Toad in the Mushmallow, or, or maybe Toad in the Mercedes. Look, I really like Toad, okay? If I had any preconceived notions about this game, I'd probably say that the best Double Dash cart combination is Toad in the Toad cart, alongside someone with a cool item like Koopa and the Triple Shells. Is that really what you, the Double Dash diehard fans, want? No, I didn't think so. Instead, I've spent the past week diving deep into the objective facts of this game, testing out all the combinations and combing through all the data that the game doesn't even show you to find the truth. That, my friends, is why I am qualified to sit here and tell you which Double Dash character cart combination is statistically the best. Richard, hit that intro. This video was suggested by the Boss Killer 94 and voted on by my patrons. If you want to have a say in the types of videos that I make going forward and support the channel more directly while you're at it, click the link in the description down below. For any of my younger fans who don't know, or for anyone who just needs a refresher, Mario Kart Double Dash lets you pick two drivers and one cart. The drivers determine which special items you get access to, and the cart determines all your stats. Our goal today is to find out which combination of drivers and cart is statistically the best. Sounds simple enough, just rank all the characters, rank all the carts, pick the best ones, and we're done, right? Right? WRONG! In this game, a bunch of carts are locked behind specific characters. If you want to use that sexy, sexy Toad card, then you gotta have Toad as one of your drivers. I mean, don't know why you wouldn't, he's literally the best. Look at this man! But sometimes, just having Toad won't be enough, because you also got to keep track of your weight class. Every character is either a lightweight, medium, or heavy, and the weight class of the heavier of the two determines which class of cart you can choose from. So if you pick one heavy character, then it doesn't matter who else you choose, you're only going to have heavy carts to choose from. Oh, Jesus, now I know why GameCube kids always have such a chip on their shoulder. They had to solve some trans-dimensional punnant squares just to get a cart. Because the characters are the things that limit which carts you can pick, let's start by finding the best cart, and then picking the best two eligible drivers to go in it. To find which cart is objectively the best, we're going to be using a method called the Decision Matrix. This is a mathematical model that engineers use to rank things based on data, without any bias. I've used it a few times on the channel before, and while it may look super complicated, it's actually just three simple steps. You start by selecting a bunch of criteria that you want to judge everything on. These criteria need to be expressible with numbers. So it can't be something subjective like, how cool is it? Sorry Toad my man, but there ain't no number that can express how cool you are. In this case, it's pretty simple. We can just use the in-game statistics for all the cars. 
If you boot up the game, you'll see that each cart has three stats, speed, acceleration, and weight, all based on a simple five point scale. So all we need to do is take these stats and put them in the trash. Fun fact, the vast majority of star ratings in this game are flat out wrong, and Nintendo has been lying to you for the past two decades. As an example, the Waluigi Racer has a speed rating of three stars, and the Barrel Train has a speed rating of four stars. But if you use the in-game speedometer, you'll see that they're actually the exact same speed. Clearly, this just won't do. But Thankfully, not all hope is lost. Nintendo may be shameless liars, but a legend by the name of Adrian Vaughn, aka LOZ King, is not. Way back in 2006, this person created a guide on game facts where they figured out all the real stats for each and every cart. And not just the three stats that the game shows you, but four more invisible stats that the game doesn't even tell you exists. Based on my own research, these numbers seem to be very accurate, so they should serve as a much more solid foundation to build our rankings on. Adrian, wherever you may be, on behalf of gamers everywhere, we salute you. There are seven total stats laid out here, the first of which is the top speed. This is the maximum miles per hour a cart can hit under normal conditions in a 150cc race. Carts like the Bullet Blaster and the Piranha Pipes max out at a top speed of 58 miles per hour, while the slower Toadette cart can only reach 55, which is actually a shockingly small range. But if that wasn't enough, Adrian also went the extra mile and found the top off-road speed for every single cart, for those rare cases when you're knocked off to the side or beef a shortcut. Or, you know, not so rare cases if you've only been playing the game for a week. As a general trend, the faster a cart is on a regular road, the slower it will be off-road. The next stat is acceleration, measured here by the time it takes a cart to go from 0 to 40 miles per hour. The lower that time, the higher the acceleration, and the faster you can get back up to speed if you get tricked by a fake mystery box. Look, they're a lot more convincing this game, but it's not my fault! It turns out weight is the one stat that's actually fairly well represented in the game. Each card has a weight of 1 to 5, which directly correlates to the number of stars it has. The only exception here is the Waluigi Racer, which should technically be 3.5 stars, because Waluigi is incapable of doing anything by the book. The width is a measure of how physically wide a cart is, which I thought was a pretty dumb thing to include until I watched a speed run where you could probably fit about 10 sheets of paper between that cart and that chain job. So, uh, fair play, we'll throw it in. The shock absorption is a measure of how much a car bounces after a jump. In general, a higher level of shock absorption is better because you have more control. And speaking of control, the final criteria is the handling. This one's a bit trickier than the others because there's really two things that go into handling. The first is the amount of speed that you lose when turning, ranging from 1 to 3 miles per hour. Pretty straightforward, the less speed you lose, the better. The tricky part has to do with the placement of the cart's pivot point. Some carts turn from the front, others from the middle, and some from the back. As to which one is better, it's hard to say. Competitive players and speedrunners seem to prefer rear turning carts, but it's really just a matter of preference. So to keep things as objective as possible, I won't be including it. Speedrunners, feel free to roast me in the comments below for my noobishness, 
but I'm guessing 99% of you literally never noticed this. There is one final stat that the original FAQ didn't account for, and that's the mini turbo. This is the small boost that you get when you successfully drift, and it's determined by your weight class, not your actual cart. In general, the lower your weight class, the longer your boost, which means my man Toad's got the goods. I've seen people online say that while heavier carts don't stay at top speed for as long, their speed decays back to normal much slower than a lighter cart. But based on my own testing, this doesn't seem to actually be true. All carts slow down from their boost at about the same rate. This is great news because it means I don't have to teach you all about intermediate calculus to explain how we account for decay time. So that's all eight criteria with data that we can compile into a spreadsheet, but you may have noticed a slight problem. We got a lot of numbers going on here, and they're all on different scales. The speeds are in miles per hour, the weight is measured in stars, the acceleration is in time, where a lower time is better, it's a mess. To make things easier on us, let's standardize all of these so they're on a scale from 1 to 10. For anything where a higher number is preferable, like speed, that's pretty easy. You can just pick a multiplier that makes the highest number a 10, and everything else will be scaled down automatically. For anything where a lower number is preferable, like with acceleration time, you got to use this more complicated formula to flip your scale and then scale it down from 1 to 10. Sounds pretty confusing, but it's going to make our jobs a lot easier in like two seconds. Great, now we got all our data here for each cart, and it's all on simple scales from 1 to 10. All we got to do is add up each cart's stats to get a final score and pick the highest, right? Well, not quite. There's still one last thing to do. I think we can all agree that a cart's off-road speed isn't nearly as important as its acceleration, for instance. So, the final step is to assign each stat a weight, which is just a percentage that measures how much we care about it. If we want one stat to matter more than another, then we can just give it a bigger slice of the pie. Determining which stat is the most important is a little tricky because it depends on the environment that you find yourself in. So I've decided to create two different sets of weights. One for versus mode, where there are other racers and items, and one for time trials mode, where it's just you versus the clock. Certain factors like weight and acceleration are very important in a versus mode where you're gonna be smashing into other carts and getting hit all the time, but in time trials, you shouldn't be hitting anything or ever slowing down, so they don't matter as much. Starting with versus mode, based on some research on various forums and my own personal experience with the game, I've selected top speed as the most important weight with 20%. It's a racing game, you gotta go fast. Right behind that, at 18%, is the Mini Turbo. This is the feature that really separates the skilled players from the rest. If you can get good at the Mini Turbo, it's basically a small mushroom around every single turn. You'll be at a huge advantage. Next is Acceleration, at 15%. In a game with a literal dump truck's worth of items being hurled your way, you're gonna get hit sometimes, and being able to get back up to speed quickly will make sure that you don't fall too far behind. After that is handling at 13%. Obviously, not losing speed on a turn is really good, but the difference between a car with good handling and one with bad handling is pretty small, so to avoid skewing the results massively, it's not ranked all that high. Weight is next at 11%. It's good if you can avoid getting smashed off the road by a heavier car, but it's easy enough to avoid that it's not a deal breaker. Same with shock absorption at 10%. It's nice, but it's not the end of the world. Off-road speed is next at only 8%. Once you've got a decent amount of practice on each track, you won't ever need it. And lastly, at the bottom is width at just 5%. If you're a speedrunner or something, sure. Being able to squeeze through the space between atoms is pretty clutch. 
but I'm gonna hazard a guess and say that 99% of us aren't nearly good enough at the game for this to matter at all. For time trials mode, speed and mini turbo are still very important, but things like acceleration, weight, and off-roading have dropped way down. Since there aren't any other racers to mess with you, these aren't nearly as important anymore, so I've adjusted the weights as such. So we have our data, it's all standardized, and we have our weights. Now there's just one thing left to do. If you multiply a cart's standardized score for each stat by its associated weight and add them all together, you'll get a final score for each and every cart in the game out of 10 possible points. Whichever cart has the highest score is statistically the best. We've toiled long and hard, we've crunched all the numbers, and now comes the moment you've all been waiting for. The time to reveal the best cart in the game, and it's the parade cart. For both versus mode and time trials, the parade cart is statistically the best, and it's not even close. Don't believe the stat screen, it's the fastest car in the game, it's got the best mini turbo, it has good acceleration, it's kinda wide, but I'm guessing most of you wouldn't even notice. It's actually busted. Surprise, surprise, the cart made of all gold that you get for completing everything in the game is pretty good. Kinda anticlimactic, so let's say we just shove it to the side for now and pretend it doesn't exist. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. The best cart for time trials mode, excluding the parade cart, is actually a tie. The bullet blaster and the barrel train are pretty much neck and neck. The bullet blaster has a slightly higher speed and a much higher shock absorption, but Despite what the game says, the barrel train has much better acceleration, better handling, and is slightly thinner for those tight shortcuts. Based on the numbers, the bullet blaster is ever so slightly higher. That could be a sign that I need to refine my weights a bit. I'll let you be the judge. But I'm guessing that most of you aren't interested in time trials. For versus mode, the true way that Mario Kart was meant to be played. The statistically best cart in the game is again the parade cart. But if we ignore that, the single best cart in all of Mario Kart Double Dash is the Toad Cart. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I really like Toad, but I promised I wouldn't have any personal bias in this video. Can you imagine though? <laughs> I'm just kidding again. The Toad Cart is statistically the best cart in the game for versus mode. Its top speed is a little slower than some other carts, but not nearly as slow as a two-star rating would suggest. What it does have though, is the damn near best acceleration in the game, some pretty solid handling, and it's a lightweight, so you already know it's got that perfect mini turbo. True, it's so light that a strong breeze will blow you off course, but that doesn't even matter because it literally has the best off-roading speed in the game. Your precious barrel train might be the best on paper, but in the hectic chaos of a real track, in the true Mario Kart experience, the Toad Kart stands alone as the best kart in the game. Fire Thunder Parade Cart, but who even beat Mirror Mode anyway? Now normally I'd end the video here, but we're only a third of the way done. With sections, not with the video. I mean, we're basically, basically almost done with the video. Can you imagine? We have our cart selected, but we still need some drivers. For time trials mode, where there aren't any items, it literally doesn't matter. The drivers don't impact your stats at all. Just pick any combo that has access to the cart you want, and you're good to go. But for versus mode, and the Holy Toad cart, who is the best team to put behind the wheel? Well, we have to have Toad to be able to drive the cart, that's a given, but who else? Statistically ranking the characters is a little trickier because there aren't any statistics associated with them. 
So this is gonna be a bit more subjective, feel free to disagree, but here's my logic. Toad and Toadette's golden mushroom is probably the strongest item, but if you're a decent racer and aren't in the back half of the pack, you're never gonna actually get to use it. In my opinion, the best item is one that you can get anytime and is good for both offense and defense. One that can help you get ahead or stay ahead. Based on that definition, there is no item better than the triple shells from Koopa and Paratroopa. With this pairing, you have the golden shroom if you're super far behind to catch up, and the triple shells to pick off the couple of people in front of you to secure the lead, or throw behind you to protect yourself from oncoming items. But again, this one's more subjective, so if you prefer the Bowser shell or the big banana, hey, more power to you. And so, to answer the question of which Mario Kart Double Dash combination is statistically the best, it depends. If you're playing Time Trials mode, pick any two lightweight characters whose voice lines you won't get sick of hearing, and pick either the Bullet Blaster if you favor a slightly higher top speed, or the Barrel Train for better acceleration and a narrower body for hitting shortcuts. And for the all-important versus mode, with items and drivers and all-out madness. You needn't have stayed around to the end of the video, my friend, for you've known the answer since the very beginning. The best Double Dash Kart combination is Toad in the Toad Kart, alongside someone with a cool item like Koopa and the Triple Shells. The statistically best character kart combination for Double Dash is Toad and Koopa in the Toad Kart. And the Parade Kart, that one's also pretty good too. A huge thanks to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Ferlano, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, Big Dog Tie for the Win, The Boss Killer 94, Alberon Freud and Celicate, and Sir Hammy. <laughs>